Welcome everyone to Project and Portfolio 5. This is week one, and this week we're going to set the Artist Development Foundation. So we're going to talk about branding in this video. So question is, what is branding? When you think of branding, what do you think of? What's the first thing that comes to mind? What are elements that make up an artist's brand? So let's do an exercise. For this first exercise, you're gonna think of your favorite artist or think of your favorite band. I'll give you guys a second. Write them down on a piece of paper. You should have a piece of paper with everything that we do. So write down your favorite band. Okay, you ready? So next, think of three words or phrases that describe the artist that have nothing to do with their music. So what do you come up with? Make a list. And feel free to hit pause if you need more time. Did they do anything specifically that made you think of that impression that you have of them? That's branding. Your brand is your story. So let's do one more exercise, and this is an exercise you will need for this week's assignment, the, the brand audit. So exercise two, this is the mashup slash elevator pitch. Having a great elevator pitch for your artist is a great way to draw some kind of comparison to other artists to give someone an idea of what your artist sounds like, what your artist's music is like. Because you've probably heard so many artists say that my music is completely unique and different from everyone else. Well, that response is not unique and not different from everyone else. So it's important to think of drawing some kind of comparison because if I tell you my artist sounds like a mix between Kendrick Lamar and Jay-Z and you're a giant fan of both, you might pay attention. So the goal is not to necessarily say your artist sounds like this, it's to give some kind of reference to get a person's attention. I always say, your music is the last thing that matters until people hear it, and then it's the only thing that matters. So get people to the music. Build the brand and build the story. So let's make three columns on your sheet of paper, and feel free to hit pause to give yourself a little bit more time. But column one, this is the classic column. These are five artists who are household names and have something in common with your artist, the artist that you're going to be working with this month. So household names these are artists everyone's going to recognize okay so like led zeppelin metallica the beatles guns and roses aretha franklin jay-z these are historic artists that have been around for a long time that people will know if you mention them by name so get take a second hit pause if you need to and come up with a list of five artists you will have to do this for your artist brand audit this weekend so might as well knock it out right now right so column two, in column two, this is the contemporary column. So you're gonna do the same thing as you did in column one, you're gonna select five artists, but these are gonna be artists who have broken within the last year or two. So within the last year or two, maybe have released a big record that are newer artists in the scene. So what do you, what do you think of? And again, feel free to hit pause if you need more time. Column three. This is the wild card column. So here you're going to put three or words and phrases. So take five words or phrases that fits your artist's music. And what do you come up with? So now, let me show you a couple of examples that will help you for, for your project this weekend. But if you have any any uh, examples you'd like to share, I would love to, to see them. And, of course, I'll see them on the, on the brand audits as well. But here's example number one. This is a, a friend's band of mine from New Orleans, and I describe their music as a blend of old school Red Hot Chili Peppers meets highly suspect with a New Orleans flavor. So column one would be the Red Hot Chili Peppers, right? That's your classic household name. Column two would be highly suspect. That's the newer contemporary artist. And then from the keywords and phrases, I have uh, old school funk was, was one of my keywords and phrases. So Red Hot Chili Peppers earlier albums were more funk albums. And then the band is from New Orleans and really has that New Orleans flavor to their music, that New Orleans funk and that New Orleans sound. So that's how I came up with their, their elevator pitch. So let me show you one more example. This is for an artist named Emily Cobb. I describe her music as a Fleetwood Mac style, free-spirited songwriter with a catchy Ingrid Michaelson-like pop sound and a rock and roll attitude. It's a little bit longer one, but 
it, it works. It has a lot of good things in there. So again, Fleetwood Mac is column A, right? That's your classic household name. Ingrid Michaelson, that will be uh, column two. That is your contemporary artist. And then the, the things in the, in the last column would be Free Spirited is a word I had in there. Of course, and your songwriter was something I had in there. Catchy, pop sound, uh, rock and roll attitudes. I kind of just decided to blend a few of them all together. So your keywords and phrases, you can use more than one of those, but from the other two columns, you wanna just choose one artist. Okay, so now we have the foundation of, of an elevator pitch and how to describe your brand and how to describe what your, your artist sounds like. So let's take a look at a couple of quick rules of branding. So these are the 10 rules of branding. Content is king, but context always wins, right? So you want to create good content, good quality, but the meaning of that content is what wins the game. So rule number one is about narrowing your focus. You can do so many things, right? And you totally say you wanna be everything to everybody, but you're really going to just spread yourself thin and just do a bunch of things with half effort. So it's important to really narrow your focus and be super specific to what your brand is and who you are. You can widen that brand in the future when, when the artist is developed and they're making money and you have a team so you're not spread too thin. People that are doing a lot of things, like when you see an artist that's doing TV, film, music, fashion, and they have a, other side business, these are people that have been around for a long time, and trust me, they have giant teams working for them. They're not doing it all on their own. So in the beginning, the important part is just to narrow your focus and be super specific on what your brand is. Rule number two, that's the rule of consistency. Be consistent with your brand. So here's an example of a show I went to. This is a rapper by the name of Mike Studd. I saw him at The Social in Orlando. I really didn't know who he was before. Wasn't really a fan, but I had, his brand is really well put together and I really liked what he did with his brand. So he's a former baseball player for Duke and he got injured. So he's a baseball player and a rapper. He got injured and had to end his career early in, in baseball. And his whole brand, his whole vibe of his, his show and all his music and everything he puts out is, is very sports and frat themed. So when you look at the shirts in the, in the picture on the left, these are very consistent with the theme and the vibe that he's going for. Even when he's posting on social media. So in, if you had Enos class in the past, you may have learned about being promotional without being promotional. So here you see a picture of him. It's him promoting his show in Orlando, but he's not necessarily like straight out promoting it. He's adding value. So instead of adding, having a call to action every time, he's adding a value to his posts. So instead of having an Instagram feed full of flyers and promotional materials. So in this picture, it's he's tagged Orlando, Florida. So you'll see like under his name, Mike Studd, it's Orlando, Florida, right? So he tagged a location. So people know he's in Orlando and he went to the trophy room. Trophy Room is a, is a business, it's a sports memorabilia business owned by Marcus Jordan, who's Michael Jordan's son. So it's very, again, brand consistent. Even his girlfriend is, is the daughter of an of a owner of a baseball team. So even as the person he's dating is consistent with his brand. I'm sure that wasn't on purpose, but it's, it's pretty interesting. So be consistent. That's rule number two. Rule number three is the rule of creating your own category. So you don't have to go and start a brand new genre, but either create a new subgenre within that genre. So be a different style of hip hop, a different style of rock, a different style of indie, or maybe find a new scene that's coming out within a genre and become the leader of that scene. So it's creating your own your own category and being the leader of that category or join an existing category and be one of the leaders in that category. And that's one way to stand out too and be uh, have a powerful, successful brand. Next, colors and shapes. Any colors and shapes that you use, they all have meaning. So know what the colors mean. So here's a quick little graphic of different colors and the meaning behind those colors, right? So if you wanna have an artist that's, that's all about love and passion, you may not want to use the colors yellow or orange or green, right? They're, they're all, all the colors have different meanings. So make sure your colors are consistent with what your brand is and the whole look and vibe that you're going for. And keep that in mind for your mood board that you're doing this week. Make sure that your colors are very consistent 
with the vibe that you're going for. Also logos, right? So symbols that are, or logos that are horizontal versus vertical are more memorable. People remember horizontal logos more. So like the Nike check, that's a horizontal logo, right? And there's so many others. If you just look at logos on online, you Google logos, you'll see how many logo, how many more logos are horizontal versus vertical one. Those are usually always more memorable. Your logo should include your name. So make sure that your name is within the logo and use your logo on, on pictures that you're posting on social media and also whatever the artist is wearing. Like when they're wearing anything, maybe there's a consistent color that the artist has in every picture. That's another great way to make your brand stand out and make your brand memorable. So to break up me from talking the entire time, here's a quick little video of my next rule of branding. And that's the rule of quality. So I'm sure you'd recognize this guy. And if not, this is Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. And here's what he has to say about quality. What would, what you, would tell you tell four guys, guys in a garage, in a garage that had a good, good batch of songs? Of songs. What, would what would you tell them to do today? Go play live. live. Just play Just live. live. Honestly, Honestly, if you're if good you're at what, what you do, you do People, People will recognize, recognize that. that. I, really I really believe it. Believe it. I, really I really believe that going, going out and playing, playing good songs, songs live as a great, great live band, band will make, make you successful. successful. I really I think, really it, think will. it will. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter if you're at the, the shithole down, down, down the street or you're on the side stage at Bonnaroo or, or you're headlining Lollapalooza. If you're a great band with great songs, people will notice it. That's, That's it. it. So quality, right? So if you're an artist, whatever your craft is, if you have a band, your band should be tight. And by tight, it means everything sounds like a, like a cohesive unit. Like I don't know if you've ever been to a show and you've seen a band play live and there's it just feels like there's a lot of gaps within the music and the music just doesn't blend really well together. And then... You go to certain shows, and, and I call it, you, you walk into just a wall of sound, right? All, everything is just a wall. Like, it's a solid wall. There's no gaps in that wall. Because everything's tight. Everything's cohesive. It's blending well together. So make sure when you have an artist that you work with, they're constantly practicing their live show. Their live show should be phenomenal. When you hear anybody in the industry talk, of course, the music is important, and the music has to be amazing, but next, the live show has to be amazing. It's a live touring industry. Most of the artists are making their living live. Unless you're a phenomenal songwriter and you can make Max Martin money, right, and just write songs for a living all day, you're going to have to play live. And when you play live, you better make sure your show is really, really good to make sure it's memorable and people are going to come back and see you live again. So the next rule of branding. PR is always first. Publicity is always first. So when you're promoting something, when you're putting something out, you're marketing a new product, regardless of what level you're at, you're always going to do PR first. And PR first means, so when you're an artist starting out and you're putting out your first song, your first EP, your first, you're doing your first show, of course you're gonna tell all your friends, all your family, right? And encourage them to tell all their friends and their family. You might not get a lot of write-ups right away, but you can try. Try getting a write-up in the local press, in the local newspaper, in the local blog. And if you achieve that, then try to expand from that, right? Try to get a regional newspaper, a regional, or a regional paper, a regional blog, a regional magazine. And if that works, then go national. But you always want to push your press as far as you can. And it starts with your friends and family. It starts with their, then goes to their friends and family to local press to regional press to national press to international press, right? That's kind of the order that you want to follow when you're first starting out. So always do PR first, regardless of what level you're at. So PR basically is just word of mouth. Try to get the word of mouth to spread as far as possible. The next rule is you want to back up the word of mouth with advertising. So if you don't have money for advertising, maybe you have five, 10 20 dollars or 25 dollars to dump into facebook posts right so if you are promoting a local show or you're promoting something locally then back it up with advertising and on facebook and we'll talk about this more when we get to the marketing uh week in week three but on facebook you literally target super specific on where you want you want to reach someone so if you're from atlanta georgia and you're reached out to all your family and your friends and your school and 
you've done all the PR you can, then you want to back it up with advertising. You don't want to advertise all over the country. You want to just advertise just in Atlanta, Georgia. Back up the PR efforts with advertising. You don't want to try to go too far beyond the, the where you did any PR efforts at because you're just going to waste a lot of money. So stay focused in the area where you're doing your PR and make sure your advertising backs up the PR that you did in that area. And that's going to be the most effective way to advertise. The next rule is the rule of credentials. So if you can create some kind of credentials or tagline to, to back up your brand, that's another way to be memorable and to stand out. right? So Michael Jackson was the king of pop. ESPN is the worldwide leader of sports. right? So come up with some kind of credentials or tagline to back up your brand and make, up, make your brand memorable. The next rule is the rule of collaboration. So collaboration, it's... it's at the end of the day, it's all about distribution, right? So distribution is the more people see your music and see your artist and your brand, the, the more people you're going to reach. But you only have so much of a reach on your own. So by collaborating with others, you're now going to be able to reach their fans, the people that follow them, right? So collaboration, collaboration, collaboration will extend your brand so much further. So Try to always collaborate with others. If you're an artist that's putting out music on SoundCloud or you're doing covers, you're doing remixes, try to collaborate with other artists. If you're in the jam world, in the funk, blues, reggae, even rock and hip hop, like try to find other artists and collaborate with you live and have them come do a guest appearance at your live show. That creates buzz, it creates legitimacy that these people are backing you up and you have their blessing. and you have to be realistic with collaboration. So if you have 500 followers, you might not be able to reach out to an artist that has 10,000 followers, right? Try to find someone that has a similar amount of followers as you do and collaborate with those artists. Unless you have a way of providing value or access to something. So let's say you're, you're a student at Full Sail and your artist has 500 subscribers on YouTube and you're trying to get this artist that has 5,000 subscribers on YouTube to collaborate with you, but you you really can't offer the same value subscriber-wise, but this artist is coming to Orlando to perform for the first time. Maybe you bring them into your school to be a guest speaker and have them speak in front of a bunch of students and reach new people in that city and be able to network and get their music out to a new audience. So that's a value you can bring to that artist. So collaboration is one of the keys to increase your distribution. So let's look at the final rule. The final rule is focus on depth, not width, right? So depth is all about quality. It's more important to have a quality brand than, than a wide brand that nobody really supports or recognizes. So an example of that would be if you have a thousand followers on social media and 90% of them are engaging with your content, 90% of them are liking your content, post or commenting on your content, sharing it, that's a lot more valuable than having a million followers where nobody engages with the content, right? You almost question, are those fans even real if nobody's engaging with that content? So always focus on depth, quality, and not width. Quality will always win. Quality in the, the people that follow you, quality in fans, and your relationships. Whenever you build any kind of relationships within the industry for yourself or your artist, make sure to always offer as much value to those relationships as possible and then just have really deep connections with those people. It's better to have really strong connections with a few people than know a bunch of people that really won't do anything for you or for your artist, right? So those are my rules of branding. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and please let me know if you have any questions. You can go to the contact page um, to get all my contact information or the other instructors that might be helping out with this class this month and good luck on week one.